Hello guys, today I'm going to be showing you how we made this ultimate survival starter base for your Minecraft survival world. It is super simple, it covers everything you might need in your world, and it has all the basics to get yourself started and situated while keeping yourself protected from mobs on the outside. We designed it to make it look more like a, a cottage core type of build or a log cabin type of build using a lot of oak and a lot of oak planks. Uh, you can definitely change up the type of logs if you want to, but this base definitely has everything you're going to need. As you can see here, this is the basic layout on the ground. Every brown wool marks one log and every white wool marks three blocks in between them. The gray is the cobblestone and the yellow it will be any crops. So so the first thing we're going to do is place one oak log and space it three blocks away. Again, one, two, three. And then make a left turn over here, three blocks, placing a log, three blocks, placing a log. And you continue this process four more down and then make another left turn and then three blocks and a log. If you want to speed up this process, what you could do is either just slow down the video and follow where I'm putting it and how many spaces I'm doing it or cut to where I put the wool picture and just do the math in your head and you can quickly lay out this without having to watch the entire thing. I'll make sure to put a marker towards the middle so you can definitely skip to it if it's a little easier for you. But all we're doing here is going around the perimeter and placing our logs uh, one log high. As you can see here, this is the basic formation you're going to have. Then the brown wool in the middle over here is going to go to this side, two blocks away from the edge, and then three blocks out, spacing them equally and just place them like so. You should have a gap this way. Continue this side all the way down, so you should have three blocks going all the way across on the back end. And then this we're gonna extend by an extra two. And then on this side, we're gonna make an L sort of shape and put two more here. So you should have a sort of L shape going right here, followed by an extra three on the side right here. Again, here's the layout if you wanna take a quick pause and stop the video and just make sure you have exactly what I've placed right now. Now that you've placed that, what you can start to do is you can go over to the front again, and you're going to build this up one more all the way around. Everywhere you put a uh, oak log, you're going to just double it up and make it two blocks high just for starters. Some of these will be three blocks high, some of them will only be two, but at the very least, each one of these needs to have at least two. This will just help keep mobs from coming out on the perimeter, and also we're going to get that raised look for the cabin style like you just saw in the beginning. All right, so again, pretty much just placing a log exactly where we already had logs, so nothing crazy. After that, grab your oak leaves, and anywhere that I have white here, anywhere between these logs on the perimeter, we're going to place three oak leaves between each of the oak logs, like so. Again, anywhere that is white in this project, if you want to go back, is where they're going to be oak leaves. So again, we're just connecting the basic outside perimeter with leaves. This is going to be the start of our wall or our fence or whatever you want to call it. This is just going to help us keep all the mobs out, uh, just but also make it look nice. I like the look of the leaves, but keep in mind, sometimes the leaves are not the best, especially when you get raided, because uh, the Ravagers can and will destroy the leaves. Alrighty, so now that we have something that looks like this, make sure this matches. Again, we'll hover above so you guys can see what we've done. Anywhere there was white, we now have oak leaves. After you've placed your oak leaves, anywhere that you've just placed an oak leaf, you're going to place a fence above it, an oak fence directly above it. So again, we're just going around the perimeter and placing the oak fence. Again, this is just going to help keep the mobs out, and it also does a lot for our decoration style for this type of build. So we're going to go all the way around the perimeter, making an enclosed circle, leaving a three block gap in towards the middle for our pathway in. As you can see right here, again, anywhere that you place an oak leaf, there should be a fence above it. Should have something that looks like this, matching the layout I have on my screen right now. All right. Now that you've done that, the next step of this process is going to be pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and we're going to come down a little bit. We're going to grab our oak logs one more time. And we're going to get ready to place our oak logs on this corner here. So we're going to put one here, one here, one here, and one here on the perimeter. Making these oak logs one more block higher. I'm just going to do one for right now. So you get the basic layout. As you can see here, it's only on this section of the oak logs over here. And then build one more higher on each side and then connect the two in between once you're done placing them all the way to four blocks high. So again, just this one section over here is going to be four oak logs tall instead of two, like the perimeter. 
And once you've done that, you can get a little lower and you can get ready to place your oak logs in between. So now we have to connect all of these in a sort of outline formation of the building. So as you can see here, I'm just placing oak logs in between all of these right now. And as you can see here, all we're going to do is just bridge all of these in a line across the perimeter, keeping the middle two out of the way. But if you're having trouble realizing what I'm talking about or understanding what I'm talking about, don't worry, because I'm about to take an overhead view and show you exactly what I've done. So you can just do it yourself. A lot of this is just following along exactly as I'm doing it or waiting till the end so I can show you how it looks and then try and match yours as closely as possible to that. As you can see here, we have something that looks like this. And then this one right here is going to be the staircase, and then the middle one is going to be connected separately as well. So now we're ready to get to the staircase to start building the home on top of this border that we've done right here. So you're going to take your oak planks and make a 3 by 3 block or chunk in this corner right here. Getting ready to place our stairs. We have something that looks like that. We can now connect this half because that doesn't matter. And now we need to build a staircase from this to the platform down below, connecting where the gray wool meets and that platform begins. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our staircases and place staircases along this side like so. And then we're gonna go underneath these three staircases and place an upside down staircase along all three sides to give us a flat surface to build on and then do this one more time. And then again, repeat this process until you've done it all the way until the stairs touch the ground completely. So again, the back of the stair is facing this way and it's upside down. Do it for all three. Head around to this side and then place your staircases right side up. And then we're going to need one more on the ground right here. So you should have something that looks exactly like this. Now we've officially made a staircase to the top of where we're going to build our home, our little starter base for our bed and our storage area. But before we do that, we need to do a couple little details before we can continue on. The first thing I'm going to do here is connect the middle to the side here and the middle to the other side there, making sort of a straight line down the middle. Again, here you go if you're trying to match it in me with time. Once we've done that, we can head on back down towards here. I'm going to grab our oak slab and we're going to simply fill in these two spaces right here. So we're going to fill in all these areas with the slabs on the top half not the bottom half. This is going to be our platform in which we're going to build on now. And now we've officially made the first layer of this project. The reason we also use slabs is slabs also help from mobs from spawning. Um, but don't worry, it's definitely not as an important detail because we will be lighting this project up later as we go. Now that you have this, what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to go back towards this side. But now we've done that half and now we need to do this half as well so don't forget to do this so we've made the platform for the top of the farm and now we're continue this one and again same like we did with the other one we're going to continue this one for up as well anywhere you see me placing an extra two blocks make sure you do the same using the logs and then we're going to connect it all the way across like so all the way across all the way across again making sure this is a nice straight line leaving a three three block by three block gap in between here's the aerial view in case you don't realize what i'm talking about have something that looks like this now again like we did with the other farm we're going to grab our slabs once more and fill in this entire area this is going to be the larger chunk of the area now that you've filled that in you can get ready to the next part. As you can see here, all we've done is make it match the other side. You have something that looks like this where the platform extends all the way to the back end of the farm. Now that we've done that, grab your oak logs one more time. Place one here, 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 another one here, here, and here. And then one more here, here, and here. Pretty much extending uh, them all up by one have something that looks like this. Again, no real change in the aerial view other than putting one more block on where blocks already existed. Then we're gonna do the same thing, add another two blocks to this half, not the other half. So we're gonna extend this up by two. This is going to be our basic building and that is going to be the porch. So again, now that we've extended it up by two, we're gonna place one block here on the top and then just get ready to connect them. Again, we're just repeating the same process we did below, leaving a three by three block uh, gap in the middle of the frame. This is just to frame the basic shape of the building before filling it in with the oak planks. And here we are just filling this in, making sure it is the same style as what we did below. 
as you can see here, we have something that looks like that. And from above, it really doesn't look much of a difference. But if you look at the side of it, you can tell that it's definitely changed in height. So now that you've done that, you're going to grab your uh, oak planks and fill this in. This one here is going to be a window. For windows, you're gonna place eight blocks in total, leaving one block in the middle. This one right here is going to be a door. You're gonna place seven blocks with two blocks in the middle. Again, this is a window, so we're gonna fill this in, eight blocks with one block in the middle. Then the one next to it, this one's going to be a window as well. So this one's going to be eight blocks with one block in the middle. Another window here, as you can see here, repeating the same process as before. And this one here is going to be a door. So we're going to place seven blocks instead of eight, leaving the bottom two blocks in the middle open. Should have something that looks like this. Again, seeing that we have two doors and we have a total of uh, four windows in this little build here, that's going to be our basic home that we're going to live out of. And once we've done that, we can kind of continue the process by placing these logs here. And again, we're just adding a one block perimeter to all of these, kind of similar how we did with the balcony on the other side for the house, as you can see here. Here's the overhead view. Again, not much has changed other than the height on this side, but it's already starting to give us a good shape and a good formation. Now we can take our oak fences and kind of frame out where we want the balcony to be. So as you can see here, all I'm doing is adding the oak fences on the balcony part right there. And now we've created the balcony for that house. And now we're going to place some oak fences here and create the balcony or runway or walkway, whatever you want to call it, for this section over here. And just simply add it right there. Now that we've added all of our fence gates to this side, you should have something that looks like this. The overhead has changed slightly with the new fences in play, but other than that, the height is relatively the same. Now that you've placed all your fences and they're all in the right spot and you have all your walkways and balconies lined out, you can grab a door, place a door here and here on our two door slots, and then grab four windows and place four window panes in our four window slots. And now already we're starting to get a basic feel of our house. That has already become 10 times better. Now that you've placed your two doors and your four windows, you're going to grab some cobblestone stairs or any kind of stairs and place them like so with one cobblestone stair sticking out and then follow along the roof line with one sticking out on the opposite side as well. I should have something that looks like this. Come around to the other side and repeat the same process on the other side with one sticking out, one block out on each side. The staircase is facing up on the brim of the house. And then if we get the aerial view, and now we're starting to see a change in the aerial view. Now we're going to take our oak, uh, sorry, not cobblestone full blocks and place them like so, matching, but up one and diagonal one block, sticking out one block on the outside of the house, have something that looks like this. Now we're going to do that, get rid of this block and this block in the middle of the house, and then get rid of that block as well, and then place two oak logs like so, just to add a little bit more texture to the roof here, making an overhang. Repeat the same process on the other side. Grab our cobblestone and extend it out, and then extend it out one block on this side as well. Here is the overhead. Again, we're definitely getting a change in the top view of this project. Grab our cobblestone stairs and place them like so one on top of each one of these cobblestone blocks we just placed, leaving the oak logs open to the world. And then once you've done that, what we can do is we can grab our oak planks and fill this in up to the same height on both sides like so. So that way we can use that to build off of now. The overhead is starting to come together on the roof and on the ridge line. And as you can see here, we're ready to do the next part. So again, diagonally one with the cobblestone blocks, and then on both sides, leaving the middle open, because we'll get to that in just one second. Cobblestone here, put some cobblestone here. Oh, don't need it there. All right, so now that we have this, we can start to frame out what we want to do with the window here. So we're going to place an extra three more blocks, leaving a one block gap in between. An extra three blocks, leaving a one block gap in between on both sides. And now that we frame that in, we can kind of take our staircases and follow the ridge line. So we're going to place one here and one here off of that staircase, and then take our cobblestone blocks and kind of follow the same pattern we've been doing for the roof line on the other side. So we have something that looks like this from the side and do exactly what we just did on the opposite side. So using our cobblestone to kind of fill in the area and make it look like almost like there's a peak or soffit on the side of the house. 
and it just adds that little textural detail that kind of makes the build come together a bit more, especially from the side, adding that little bit of texture definitely helps. And then grab your staircases again and place your staircases on top of all those cobblestone blocks that we've just now laid out. And it's going to start to look like a cross-like formation with one block gap in between. And once we've reached the one block gap, we're going to get to this fun part where we're going to start adding the top or peak of the roof and the roof will be done. But before we do that, here's what you got to do. We're going to grab a cobblestone slab. Before we place that, we're going to place a oak plank here and leave that block there. Grab a cobblestone block, place it there. So again, oak block, cobblestone block, oak block, cobblestone block, and oak planks, and cobblestone. All right, so now we've done that. You should have something that looks like this from the side. Grab your cobblestone stairs and place it upside down on top of that or next to that cobblestone block we just placed on all four sides. That way you have something that looks like this. It'll give it that little dimension, a little peak to that roof we've just created now. And then to cap it off, we're going to fill in all this top part with cobblestone. And then finally, just so we don't have mobs spawning up here, we're going to grab our cobblestone slabs and just fill in wherever we just put a cobblestone block, put a cobblestone slab on top of it. And then now we have officially capped the roof. Here's the overhead, a huge change in the overhead. But from the side, we are not done yet. Again, before we can close this project talk, we need to finish the ridge line of the roof. It's looking a little blocky right now. So how to fix that is put an upside down staircase under each full block like so to give it that sort of texturalized and more dimension side look to it. We're going to do it like that on this one. I'll do the same thing for the little overhangs we did on this side, except for when we get to the middle here, we're going to add a oak fence just as a little like uh, filler block. You can do window panes if you want to. But as you can see here, the ridge line for that is the same style we're doing over here, just placing upside down staircases to add a little bit more dimension and make it a little more easily and cleanable transition from the bottom to the peak. And now we're going to place two more blocks there with an oak fence in between. Just have something that looks like this. And that is our basic house form done. As you can see here, we now have a perimeter. We now have a house. We now have a balcony. And we now have a little walkway coming off of it. So we are doing pretty darn good. This is the basic house formation. And now what we're going to do is start to add more and more uh, projects and details to this. So anywhere that you see the gray wool here, I'm going to add cobblestone to it by removing the gray wool first. So what all I'm doing is I'm going along and placing a cobblestone block. If you slow down the video or do it one at a time, you can count exactly how many blocks I'm placing and exactly in which direction I'm placing, which is why I'm going towards the outside of the perimeter. So it'll be a little easier to see and or to fill in later on. If you definitely want to get a better idea of how to do this, uh, I will go and do an overhead for you like I've done with everything else. And you can just count out the blocks and see for yourself how many this was. I didn't do the math for this one. I felt it would be easier just for you to either do your own paths or no paths, whatever you want to do. But here's the overhead. That's exactly what it should look like. Again, we have one leading to the staircase and then two almost looking like uh, branching off like a cactus arm. And we're going to add some here. We're going to add some oak planks here just at the end of the staircase. Uh, just so we don't have grass there. Again, the overhead, it kind of looks like a short little stubby cactus. <laughs> um, but those are the basic pathway, pathways we want to use for this project. And anywhere that I had gray wool before, you just want to fill in with cobblestone as your pathways. Or you can put dirt or any other block as long as you want to make it your pathway. Then grab some fences. Come up to our catwalk over here. You're going to place one fence on the back two corners. Another fence there. And we're going to place one more fence here, leaving a uh, one block gap between that and the house. So a total of six fences in total. Uh, place one fence on top of each one of those fences. So it's going to be a total of 12 fences. Two fences high on each post. You should have something that looks like this. Grab some slabs and extend. Put it up one above, directly above the fence, and extend it to the top of the other fence, like so. You have something that starts to look like this. This is going to be our little overhang, our little gazebo, whatever you want to call it. And then you can either extend this one block up, but I'm going to extend it one block out, like so. So, and then we're going to do that, and then we're going to build up and over one block, like so. 
and extend that one two blocks and then carry this all the way across to make a sort of a slanted style roof, add a little texture to this project. Place another fence here. So this side or this back half is going to be three fences tall, unlike the other, which is going to be two fences tall. And then cap it off doing the same thing, placing a uh, slab on top of all of them. And it gives you sort of that slanted style roof or a little overhang, a gazebo, whatever you want to call it, on your walkway there. And it just definitely helps to add a little texture and form to this build. Now that we've done that, we're going to want to do is you're going to go over here. So now that we've done that half, we're going to come to this half over here. And you're going to take your uh, oak fence and place one oak fence there, 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 and there. Four oak fences in total. Then you're going to go to this block here, placing it on the bottom half of the sidewall here, and place campfires, similar to how like we did with the slabs, one block above the fences, making sort of a overhang going across from the uh, gazebo to now we'll call these stables over here. It's okay if they're lit for right now, but the campfires sort of give that oak log or texturalized uh, you know, uh, roof feel, and I really like how it looks. Now that you've done that, you can use a water bucket or a shovel and extinguish all of these campfires. It is a lot of campfires, but that's all right. But once it's done, you'll really love the look of this. It sort of gives a lattice type of feel. And using campfires is also a quick and easy uh, way to get some extra detail without making it look too simple. As you can see here, we've now added a uh, separate layer where it starts to look uh, more texturalized. We're going to take some more fences and place three fences here, three fences here, one fence there, another fence next to it, and then five fences here as well making sort of a stable-like position there, and add another two right there. Those are going to be our two stables where you can put pigs, you can put horses, or you can even put cattle there if you want to. But we're going to use it for horses because it is a stable. And you'll be able to quickly hop on them and ride right on out into the road. But now we've created the uh, gazebo and we've created the stable. The next thing we're going to do quick here is get our uh, some of our crops growing. We're going to grab our water bucket, a slab, and... Uh, we're going to start a couple farms here, just a few simple farms, just so we have some food coming in. So we're going to mine out these two blocks here, place a water bucket, and then waterlog the slab by placing it on top. Mine out those two blocks there, place a water bucket, and then waterlog these slabs as well. Just have something that looks like this. Anywhere you see yellow is going to be a farm. We'll place two fences there and two fences there. We're going to grab our potato, and the first thing we're going to do, I think over here, we're going to do some potatoes and or carrots. So we're going to get rid of the yellow, and this should be grass blocks. Then we're going to till all the grass blocks. And as you can see here, I think we're going to do carrot for this one. Uh, but anywhere there's yellow is where a farm is going to be. So we're going to just get ourselves set up with a carrot farm. So now we have carrots growing. I think this one over here we're going to do wheat. So we're going to remove the yellow, put grass blocks down here, and we'll do wheat. So now we have to all we have to do is till the ground and then plant our wheat seeds. This is This corner here is going to be wheat seeds. As you can see here, we already have uh, the water making the uh, soil more fertile, whatever you call it. And then once we've done that, again, same thing over here. We're going to do, since we did carrot and wheat, we'll do potatoes here. Or did I do carrots over there? No, this is, this is carrot. Yeah, yeah, so this is carrots. We'll do wheat, and then we'll do potatoes on this one right here. So now we have all three of the basic crops growing right here. This one over here, again, you just place regular slabs since the other half is already waterlogged with fences. And now we can see those three yellow squares I've placed now have crops growing in them. And we can still access this from the road. As you can see here, the aerial hasn't changed much. But what we're going to do here is we're going to remove these three logs here. Place stone brick or cobblestone stairs right there. Stone brick there and there. And then we're going to extend this towards the back. Another two, so again, one block out like that, and then another block out like this, making a platform. This is going to be our furnace and smelting area um, underneath our house, which is a great place to put it, which is why we had it raised. But now that we've done that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to grab uh, some handy-dandy uh, furnaces and place the furnaces one block away from the edge there, diagonal to the oak log. We're going to place four in total there, and then we're going to place six over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then 
add another two on this side right here. So we're going to place another two furnaces, so one, two. So six on each side with a gap in the middle right there. Grab a door, place the door in the middle there. I'm going to personally place it facing the opposite direction, so we have a little bit of uh, depth to the project with a slab on top, so you can't really uh, you know, see the inside of the farm just yet. Now that we've put the door in place and we've made our furnace wall, we can go inside here and we can extend this a uh, little bit out one more, and this will be the back half of our uh, little secret furnace smelting room. So we're going to add a little bit more stone bricks there, a line of stone bricks right there. Then we're going to come over to this side, and what we can do here is you can add whatever you want, but I think since we have the fences there and we don't want people seeing in, we'll add some chests here. And that way you can even access the chests from the outside if you want to. We're going to place two double chests there. Then we're going to go to this side over here. We're going to place an anvil because we're going to need an anvil. We're going to place a stone cutter in case we ever need a stone cutter. And we're going to place a grindstone on top of the anvil. So now you can come back here. We have a secret little area that you can work in. Um, if you want, you can drop a lantern in this corner or something. Uh, I'm just going to plop it right on the floor next to these furnaces right here. And now we've officially made our secret little crafting or secret little stone melting area, our blacksmith workshop, whatever you want to call it, really taking advantage of the space we have back here. But we're leaving it open because we're going to do another quick little trick towards the back of the project that I haven't shown you yet. So now we've finished our furnace room. We're going to take uh, some oak blocks and place them right there on this side of the staircase we're going to leave it open because we're going to do something a little cool in one second and on that side we're going to leave it open as well you can go back on this side of the project and you can close this off and this will officially finish the uh we'll call it the furnace room for this project and now you officially have a furnace room a smelting room whatever you want to call it and that's underneath this house right here now for this house right here what you're going to want to do is again, maybe the first thing is you're gonna to want to texturalize the roof so it doesn't look so blocky. You can do so by grabbing some slabs and placing some upside down slabs along anywhere where you see a full block. Similar, similar to like how we did with the outside, just adding a little bit more texture to the roof. Any little texture you add definitely helps with your builds, whether it's minor or major, it always makes it look better. We're gonna place a crafting table in the corner. You can place your bed in here if you want along the side of the wall. You can place a couple of double chests in here if you want to. You know, anything you want to place in here, you can place a furnace, a loom, a composter, anything you could possibly imagine. This is just your basic, you know, survival house. Whatever you want to put in here is entirely up to you. Although a little trick I will tell you about is going to come over here. I'm going to grab uh, some, uh, let's see, what do we have? You know, maybe grab a barrel, a smithing table, whatever you want to do, and just place a, you know, down here as well. Um, you can place it on top of the crafting table, anything that helps. Another little trick I'll show you is if you go to the uh, the roof line over here and you come towards the corner on either side, if you want to place a slab, a chain, and then a lantern, it also helps add a little textualized detail. And it also keeps mobs from spawning in your house, which is a must-have in Minecraft. So again, a couple of lanterns go a long way. You can place some barrels next to it. Uh, use some slabs and put them underneath to make it look like a little shelf you got going on. You know, and plus the barrels are great because it adds a little extra storage up high where that space wasn't being used anyway. The key to this project is using space in the most efficient way possible. That is my best recommendation for any Minecraft survival base. Uh, we're going to go onto the patio here and place some red carpets just to add some, uh, you know, color and a little life to this project. Onto our little walkway or uh, overhang there. We're going to add some lanterns to the corners of the house. One, it'll help light up the staircase. It'll help light up the platform. You can place an extra lantern there if you're worried about it. Um, but you can get rid of that if you don't need it. All I'm doing here is just adding lanterns to the corners. Again, anywhere you can fit a lantern or a torch is definitely going to be helpful in this project. But I like the lanterns because it adds a little bit of detail. We'll place some lanterns on the side of the fences here. And this will help light up the walkway. Uh, we already placed a lantern inside there. We can place the lanterns here. And uh, that one's already lit up. So that will help light up this corner. Again, lanterns are your best friend. And now we've done the inside of the house. We've done the balcony. We've done the half of the crops. And we've done our smelting room. Uh, another little tip that we've done most of our building up, you can take some slabs and cap the top of the oak logs to prevent mobs from using the leaves to jump over. Um, the slabs will definitely just help them from being able to climb over. 
Um, place the slab there, there, and there for a little extra detail. We'll place some slabs on our balcony. That way we can't just jump off the balcony. So now the overhead should look something like this. Again, we've made a lot of progress since we first started this build. Another little trip, uh, a trick I'll show you is adding trap doors to the side to prevent spiders from climbing up. And it also really helps with some detail, like putting them here and here. It definitely helps give it that more of a 3D dimensional detail without ruining the build too much. And uh, it also helps spiders from climbing up your walls. Like if you put them here on the outside, the spiders won't be able to climb up these logs now because we have a platform that they can't uh, cross over. I personally just like it because it turns your flat, you know, two-dimensional build of Minecraft into a uh, more three-dimensional, more texturalized build. And the trapdoors definitely just give it that added effect of, you know, being styled and, you know, it just looks better. Again, there's no such thing as crazy, uh, too much detail, but when you come to the back over here, rather than put it on the lower half, we'll put it on the top half because that way it'll just look a little bit better. If you put it too low, sometimes it looks like the lower half looks nice and the top half. So if you split it and put it down the middle, it definitely looks a little bit better. And as you can see here, we're already coming so far along. It is looking great. I'm going to add a few more trap doors over here to the sides. Um, nothing crazy. But once you're ready to move on to the next part of the project, after you've placed all your trap doors, the next thing we're going to work on is a little enchanting table. Remember how we left this side open? That's right. We're going to place some bookshelves on this side. One, it just gives it the effect of keeping uh, the enchantment table room sort of uh, you know, built into the house. And two, we're taking advantage of the space that was going to be wasted anyway. You can place an enchantment table in the middle. You can add, get rid of it, add some more bookshelves if you don't want you know, the massive level enchantments. And place the enchantment table here if you want to. Just add a little texture. But we're going to try and build something that gets the ma the best in chance without looking the worst. If you know what I'm talking about. So by doing that, we're going to add two on each side. Add another one here. That way it's not fully enclosed, but you're still getting all those bookshelves over there. I'm going to add a uh, slab to that one. And a slab to this one. Add a uh, trap door to the bottom of that. A trap door to the top of that. Just to give it that side or a... Uh, Stacked texture at a uh, slab here with a lantern underneath to light up this corner. And then some slabs, uh, sorry, some trap doors like this to kind of give it that overhang protected from the elements there. Sort of make it look like it's a little nook built in. But now we kind of want to make it look as if it's almost hidden. If it's almost like a secret part of this base that you don't really want anyone to see without it standing out too much. So, in order to do that, what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our slabs and water again. And we're going to do that same trick I showed you before. We're going to get rid of these two blocks. Place water here. And then waterlog the slabs. That way we can put sugar cane next to it. And then get rid of these blocks here. And then we can even put water underneath that bookshelf there and place sugar cane next to that. Then we can fill this in with our grass blocks. And uh, we can place a sugar cane next to any water source. So uh, you just have to make sure the slab is waterlogged. In order to do that, you can just place a, you know, some, maybe an extra water block if you have to. So you can see here, we're just dumping an extra water block, waterlogging our slab, placing our sugar cane there and there. Um, so now the water is hidden, but we're still growing sugar cane. You can grab a couple of flowers, like roses, like a rose bush, add the rose bush in. Uh, we're doing a couple of the pink ones as well. And then once you've done that, a little trick I'll show you to kind of add it in to make it look a little bit more hidden is we're going to grab a quick shovel or a, a, sorry, I think I went with a hoe here. Yeah, you don't want to do, you don't, you don't want to use the hoe. Uh, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. No, so you're going to want to grab the shovel instead. Use the shovel and kind of till a path uh, to the uh, kind of the... Uh, enchantment table here but also making it look like it was on purpose so what i'm doing is i'm making it look kind of like a zigzag get a little pathway to the furnace um also kind of helps with uh blending it into the road making it look a little bit more hidden one final trick i'll show you how to do is definitely if you want to make your builds look a little bit more wild adding vines or bone milling the ground like so adding a couple flowers in places like that Definitely helps give it that sort of natural look like it's, you know, built into the, the environment or nature, whatever you want to call it. I personally love how this turned out. I think it turned out really nice. 
Uh, the only thing I'm going to do over here now is before I get rid of the sugar cane is underneath this sort of uh, gazebo here. We're going to get rid of these blue wool blocks and place water on all of these. And then on anywhere you see green blocks, we're going to place our sugar cane. So we're going to get rid of these green blocks and uh, replace them with grass. Or you can even replace them with sand and replace them with sugar cane. And now we have officially have a sugar cane farm or a simple sugar cane farm. Uh, you know, little nook here where sugarcane will grow, again, taking advantage of the space. You can extend it out to the other side if you want, make this whole area back here sugarcane. But I just wanted to keep it in that one little corner because I have plans for the other half. We're going to extend the road out over here. So we're going to extend it back to this pillar right here and then extend it all the way back to the main road. Again, all we're doing now is just sort of filling it in. If you want to slow it down and you know see what I'm doing, but I really don't think it's that complicated. I think you can manage this one without uh, too much complexity. Again, here we are now placing uh, some gray wool. And then so this is the basic form of the road, extending it back here, just adding a little detail. You can take some composters and maybe a loom or something, a smithing table, and shove it underneath the staircase here. Again, taking advantage of the space. Maybe uh, extending the road a little bit more to the side so it looks a little bit more natural. A lantern here, anywhere that you can really fit it, that will definitely work. So now we can leave this project open over here. That'll be the next part of the project. While we still have our water bucket, as you can see here, we still have a little bit of blue left in the right-hand corner. And we still have some crops to place, so we are not done just yet, but we're getting pretty darn close to it. We're going to get rid of these blue wool here and just place our water buckets and create an infinite water source. Or a little pond that you can fish out of, whatever you want to do. But that way you don't have to leave your house in order to get, you know... Uh, water or anything. You can even place some more sugarcane around here if you want to, uh, like some sugarcane and some lily pads, make it look a little bit more natural, like a little, you know, little lake or little alcove, whatever you want to do is entirely up to you. Now that we've done that, we're going to get rid of this yellow patch right here, place some grass blocks down, and then this is going to be where we're going to plant our sweet berry bushes. So now we have potatoes, carrots, wheat, and sweet berry bushes. We'll go over here, and similar to how we did with the wheat and carrot, we'll place a water, and then waterlog our slabs, getting rid of these blocks here, replacing them with grass, like so. Getting rid of this one here, water, waterlogging a slab, and then getting rid of these blocks here and replacing them with grass. If you already have grass blocks here, that's totally fine. And then we're going to till this land here, place three watermelon seeds, this land here, and place three pumpkin seeds. And then we can place uh, some slabs here as well to kind of close off or finish the look. If you want, you can even add another slab right here. Um, all you have to do now is wait for these to grow. And now we have pumpkin and melons growing, as well as wheat, carrot, potato, sweet berry bushes, and even sugar cane. Similar to how we did before, we're going to place some uh, some uh, staircases, not some uh, some fences, and just to add a little texturalized details with some lanterns on it to kind of light up the pathway. And again, now we have almost an entire uh, different kind of farm going. Taking advantage of all these spots and spaces was definitely a really good idea. But now that we've placed all of that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go and we're going to grab our oak fence gate and place three oak fence gates in front like so, just so we can keep mobs from coming in and out, but also be able to uh, run in and out as much as we want to. So again, now that we've completely closed off, no mobs can come in. You can place one next to the water source if you want to keep yourself from accidentally falling in the water source. And then we're going to place three in front of each stall door in the stable. We're going to come back here, place three in between that one right there. And then we're going to go, finally, the only last place you're going to need gates for this project is you're going to go to the top over here underneath the gazebo and place three like that underneath the gazebo in order to maybe keep this as a little containment area for your pets or for like anything else you find, maybe an iron golem, a snow golem, or even a villager. But now that we've done that, we've officially technically completed the project a little like tip i can add for you or what i'll show you what i did with this one for my survival world is as you can see here i went over here and i simply just added a couple of horses to our stable um their names are frederick and willis they are really good friends <laughs> over here as you can see here we turned this over here 
underneath our house into a little animal keep. So you can keep cows, you can keep sheep or pigs. Up here, we put all of our cats and all of our dogs in our little containment gazebo over here. You can even put a couple of chairs down in here and turn this into a little like lookout or a post, whatever you want to do. Um, but this is the completed project. I really hope you guys enjoy this. It is perfect for your survival world. Uh, I use it constantly. I'm using it currently in one of my other worlds. It has everything you could possibly ever need. All the basic farms. And as you can see here, now we can finally do the tour. You enter through the front gate. You uh, on to the left, you have your carrot, wheat, and potato farms, along with your sweet berry bush farm. To the right, you have your stables, your pumpkin, and your melon farm. If you go up the stairs here, we have our main house, and we have our gazebo with all of our cats and dogs. Once you go into the house, we have plenty of storage, our bed. You can even use this other door onto our little overhang, our little platform there. We can take the stairs back down to the main part of the base. And if you go over here, we can take and collect all of our crops. Use this secret door here to access our secret smelting and furnace room. Or just use the furnaces from the outside. If we go right, we can access our water. We can use our enchantment table here that's kind of built into nature. We can get on our two trusty steeds if we want to. Access our sugar cane. Use our compost underneath the stairs. Or even feed and breed our sheep that are in the corner here. This is the complete farm. If you made it this far, congratulations, and let me know what you think. Thank you so much. Take care.